Hey everyone, in this week's tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make your very own line squaring program. Line squaring is a technique that happens to be very helpful in FLL. As a matter of fact, I actually pioneered line squaring at first in Nature's Fury when I was in FLL a few years ago. This is one of my signature programs and I covered it in an earlier tutorial, but this video is meant to replace those other three and I'm just hoping to be a little bit more concise and easier to understand this time around. So anyway, the basis behind line squaring is when you have a line that runs horizontally as opposed to a line that runs vertically if you were line following. And you want your robot to drive up to the line and center itself within the center of the line, but also be a perfect 90 degrees to the line. And this will help eliminate a lot of the errors associated with odometry because you could use this horizontal line as a fixed standard off of which your robot will fix both its distance in one direction and its angle. Let's quickly talk about the hardware requirements for your robot. You'll need two drive motors, which most robots have anyway, as well as two color sensors on the front of your robot. Ideally, the color sensors should be spaced out and they should be placed just in front of each of your drive wheels because if you think about the way this program works, each of these color sensors is going to independently control its corresponding drive motor. So the color sensor you plug into port 1 is going to control the left drive wheel, which is in port B, and the color sensor in port 2 is going to control the right drive wheel, which is in port C. And of course the next step, which is required for any program that uses the color sensor, is to measure your target light values. And you do this by scrolling over to port view in the EV3 menu and measuring the reflected light intensity on either one of your color sensors, or both if you wish. You're going to have to measure the reflected light intensity of the white part of the line, as well as the black part of the line. So now that all of that's out of the way, it's time to get to the part that you actually came for, the programming. Make sure you remember those light values that you measured just a minute ago because we're about to use them. The first thing we want to do is pull out a loop block because the first part of the program is just going to be the robot driving in the forward direction until it gets sight of the line. We're going to put a move tank block inside here and we're just going to set it to on and we're going to have the robot drive in the forward direction which for my robot is negative power because I'm using Sirius and I'm going to set it to 25% because of the tall wheels on Sirius, a low power still translates to a pretty high speed. But this will vary depending on your robot. We're going to set the exit case to one of our color sensors and measuring reflected light intensity. Recall that both of our sensors are in either port 1 or 2. And you could use whichever you would like. It doesn't really matter because we can't use both color sensors unless we use exit cases, which I covered in a different video. And since we're looking for the black line, we want it to be less than our threshold value. And in my case, 15% is going to be, any value less than 15% is going to indicate the black line. And like I said, that's one of those things that can vary. After that, we're going to want to stop our motor, so take out another move tank block and turn it off. And now that our robot is over the black line but not necessarily squared, we can move on to the actual line squaring part of the program. So we're going to drag out another loop block and inside of this loop is where all of the line squaring lives. We're going to change this to unlimited and we're going to switch change from unlimited to count. This part is optional. This is only if you would like to repeat your um, line squaring to get more accuracy out of it. If you're in a crunch for time, it's not necessary but I'm going to set mine to 2 so that after it does the squaring once it's going to run it again just to be a little bit more accurate. Now inside of this loop we're going to individually center both the left and the right wheels using their corresponding color sensors and we're going to start with the left wheel first so we're going to take out yet another loop block and take another motor block out this time instead of using move tank we'll just use the large motor block because like I said we center each of the wheels individually we're going to start with the left wheel, which we said was in port B. Remember that that's controlled by the color sensor in port 1. And instead of on for rotations, we're just going to turn this on. And we're going to want our wheel to drive slowly in the forward direction. So like I said, negative power is the forward direction on my robot Sirius. That may vary for your robot. And I'm going to set it to 15%. 
you may want to change this as well but you're going to in general want this to be pretty slow so your robot can take its time for accuracy sake we're going to change the exit case to color sensor reflected light intensity again this time we definitely have to use port 1 because like I said port 1 is paired with motor B we're going to flip the sign of this and set this to greater than so we're looking at a light value that's brighter than our threshold value that we set because we're looking for the white line and I found that the default setting which is 50 percent works fine for my robot like I said depending on your lighting conditions and what you measured before this threshold value may vary but what we've done so far is we've started the motor the left motor driving in the forward direction until the left sensor sees the white line what we're going to do then is stop the motor we're going to take out another one of these motor blocks just hit off and make sure the port matches so port B and after that we're going to take a motor rotation block make sure that also matches since we're still working only with port B here and we're just going to have this reset the degree counter we reset the degree counter because then we're going to go back in the opposite direction and find the other edge of the line because the lines on an FLL mat have a thick black line in the middle followed by a white line on either side so if you think about it we're going to the white line on one extreme resetting the motor and then going back to the other extreme to the white line on the other side and measuring the distance so let's do that after this we actually need to do a bit of a special step we need to add a block here that is not inside of the loop and I'll explain why in a second we're going to actually set this on for degrees we're still going to match the port because we're still just working with port B we're going to want this to go in the reverse direction now so flip the sign from before if negative was forward then positive is going to be reverse but you want the same power so 15 percent and I'm going to set this to about 40 degrees this may also vary but the reason why you do this is because your robots already resting on the white line you want the robot to just kind of move itself off of the white line at first before it starts looking for the white line again if you don't do this step then it's not going to work because your robot's going to park on the white line then look for the white line again but it's going to see the same one it's already on when in reality you want to look for the other one so you need to get it started in that direction before you start looking otherwise we're just going to take what we did before here and we're going to copy it because we're just doing the same thing in the opposite direction so we could put that right there flip this sign so we're going to positive 15 but otherwise since we're looking for a white line again just a different white line on the other side of the black line we're going to leave this all the same and afterwards of course we're going to have another block where we're going to stop so we can even copy that we could shut that motor off now here comes the interesting math part none of the math is too complicated here but you're going to see what we're doing with the motor rotations we're going to take out another block make sure it's set to measure degrees and we're going to again match the port to port B we're going to take out a math block from this section switch its operation to divide and take the output from the degrees on that motor put it as the A input for your division block and the B will be 2 so what we're doing is we're taking that measured degree value divided by 2 and then we're going to take that result and plug it into one final large motor block we're going to have this set for degrees like so and we're going to match the port yet again probably sound like a broken record by now the result of this division block is going to become the target degree value of this motor block and we're going to drive in the forward direction again so what has basically happened um, if you weren't following that I'm going to go over that again is we're driving the motor in the forward direction until we see the white part of the line that's in front of the black we're going to stop the motor and reset then we're going to drive in the reverse direction until we pass the black line and go over it to the white line on the other side and since we reset the motor rotation at the front now that we're at the back we have that distance in between the two white lines then we can split it in half using this block here and drive halfway back and that will bring the left wheel right back into the center 
and that's how the robot is going to center its wheels in this program. So far we've only done the left wheel. We have to move on to the right wheel, which is pretty easy because it's the same exact code. So you could select all of this, copy it, then paste it back in behind the code that we've just written. The one catch is we're going to have to change all of the sensors and the motors, where previously we used the motors in port B and the color sensor in port 1. We're now going to switch everything to use the sensor, the sorry, the motor in port C and the sensor in port 2. And this is very important, otherwise your line squaring of course isn't going to work because it's going to mismatch your sensors. But every time you see a motor in port B, it now becomes C. So we'll go through that. Anytime the sensor is port 1, it'll just go to port 2. And just go through your program very quickly until you've matched all the ports again. And then when you zoom out, you have your completed line squaring program. It looks like a very long, kind of intimidating program, but all of this executes within the expanse of a few seconds. And like I said, it does the left wheel first, it centers that, then it moves on and does the right wheel. And we have this set to repeat it, so it actually executes a total of two times for more precision. But you can adjust this to more or less repetitions depending on your time requirements or if you want to make it more accurate. Here's the line squaring program that we just made in action. That second repetition that we programmed into our code is very helpful because it allows our robot to be able to square itself even if it has a moderately steep approach angle. Thanks for checking out my video this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.